In this video, I want to chat about composite positional tolerances. So these can be pretty spooky the first time you see them on a drawing, but they actually give you more tolerance. So when you see them, if you're making a part, you should be happy because the designer went out of their way to give you some more tolerance on whatever you're making. So you might wonder, why am I standing in front of a blank wall with a light switch? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. This is how I like to explain composite positional tolerances. So first of all, composite is when you have one uh, GD and T symbol in the feature control frame. So you'll see an image right here. You've got the one position symbol, and you've got two tolerances, right? Looks tricky. Let me explain what they're for. So say we're going to install this light switch on the wall. Now, I know light switches are done by contractors and electricians, not machinists, but the same things apply. So the important thing is that we drill four holes that are gonna match up with the four holes on this plate. Now, let's just take it for granted. We looked at the drawings of the plate. Let's say we need a positional tolerance of 30 thousandths to achieve that. So we've gotta drill four holes. They've gotta be positionally tolerant within 30 thou to each other. Now, if we make a drawing, and I'll include an image right here, a positional tolerance, 30 thou to some datums. So what are the datums in this situation? The floor, let's say this door jam, and the wall, okay? So A, B, and C. A wall, B floor, C door jam. We'll put those on the drawing and it'll be big. It'll be like, whatever, 36 inches from here, eight inches from here, and against the wall. That'd be really difficult for an electrician or a contractor to come in here, look at that drawing, and need a positional tolerance of 30 thousandths against that much distance. So if you have you know, a tape measure, you know, find 30 thousandths on there, you can't. The smallest you'll get is about a 16th. So you can't accurately measure a 30 thou positional tolerance with a tape measure. So you get a micrometer, right? A three foot micrometer is thousands of dollars. I know in the real world, electricians just, and contractors just kind of wing it, but as machinists, you might see a big weldment that has these kinds of tolerances on them, so it's worth knowing. So how do we get around that, right? We still need the thing to fit. What we could do is open up that positional tolerance, say make it plus or minus, or make the positional tolerance you know, half inch diameter. That, you could measure the position with the tape measure. That'd be cool, right? Well, if you do that, then the panel's not gonna fit, right? The holes could be all over the place. So, back to the topic of the video, composite tolerances, what we do is separate the location of the pattern of the holes from the holes to each other, right? So, on the screen here, you'll see that first number, that first tolerance is big, right? We'll say it's a diameter of a half an inch. That is where the pattern of holes is, right? So imagine we make a template, stick it on the wall. We gotta be a half inch, right? So we stick it on there. It could be a half inch or a quarter inch this way, quarter inch this way, right? It can move around a little bit, which in this application is perfectly fine. A light switch doesn't have to be perfectly aligned to anything. It can be a little off this way, that way, that way. It doesn't really matter that much. The, the purpose of this is controlling the correct things. So we move to the second tolerance. That is a position of the holes to themselves, right? So when you make this pattern, you want to make sure these holes are positioned to each other, which is separate from the location of the pattern. So you'll see the second tolerance is 30 thousandths. That's good enough to meet the tolerances of the switch panel, right? So we know it's going to mate up. So we can measure both of those separately. Now, as far as inspection, that can get a little bit tricky. The, the thing to remember is that you measure them separately. So you can make, if it has the MMC symbol, you can make a gauge that fits over this. So you put the gauge in there and then you measure the distance of the gauge from everything else. Got to be within that first positional tolerance. And then the gauge, you make a separate gauge that'll check the holes to each other. Now in this situation, as long as the, the, the cover fits over 
the holes, you're good to go. So what we're doing is separating the location of the pattern from the location of the features to each other. Won't go into datums or anything. Maybe I'll make another video where I get into more detail about it. But that's how I like to remember which does what. The first segment controls the location of the pattern of features. The second controls the features to each other, which can move around inside of that wider pattern locating framework, okay? So that's it for this video. Just wanted to make a, a quick video to explain that. Please like and subscribe and look out for more videos on this topic coming up soon.